Hi everyone, nice to see you, and importantly, it's nice to be seen. Well, yes, we're back in the Bluebell Woods, and why not? They're out, I want to be seeing them. But while we're here, I thought we could talk about and have a go at the bow drill, because a lot of people ask me how to get the bow drill going, and I've had some emails saying they've sort of been struggling with it a little bit. So it would be a good opportunity just to have a go at the bow drill. But what I'm going to do today is I'm going to have a look around and see if we can find any suitable material. My preferred choice of wood is willow. I've tried sycamore, I've tried hazel, I've tried... Oh, the list goes on and on and on, right? And some I've, I've failed at and some of them I've succeeded at. But for a really good beginner's wood, I'm going to go for willow because it's just my friend it seems to work more often. So, talking about my friend, I think there's some tracks down here, the old deer here. Obviously they've been coming through this gully. That's pretty cool. Right, I'm going to cut this bit off and have a look, and then if that's no good, I think this bit here is dead, and I'm going to cut that bit off. So I'll try this bit first. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, I don't want all that. There's some pretty good bits on there. That's a good, that make a good drill, so I'll take that off. Okay. Okay, so why do the bow drill? Well, the bow drill, as I've always been told, is your last resort. And if it is your last resort, at least you've got a last resort. And it isn't as hard as what people have said it is. I mean, I know a lot of people do struggle with this, and I did also when I started, so it, it isn't all that. But this is all to do with practice and proper preparation and all that malarkey. I mean, you can do this in really bad weather, but you've got to really know your stuff. So what's really good about also knowing about the bow drills is that if you're going into a wilderness area, you just know that you can get a fire going if you really, really need to. So what do we need to get this going? So I'm going to run through the bits and then we're just going to tidy them up and get it going. So I've got two sticks for a drill. Okay, they're not rotten. They're quite solid. Okay, they're the drills. I've got a bearing down block which goes on the drill, which I'll show you later. This is going to be my half. Okay, still good wood. Okay, and then we need a... a um, the bow itself and this is quite sturdy it's quite solid okay it's dried like that which is a real bonus it may be a bit big but i can work with that okay and then we need also the string obviously we've got some strings so we're going to put some string on there and then we just all we need then is a a piece of silver birch bark to i put it under uh, to put the the half on and then i'll put my uh, bark underneath it to catch it we'll show you that later so first thing I want to do, I'm just going to split this in half. Okay, which may be said than done. Because then I ain't got a whacking stick. Okay, she's not half, but that's a pretty good bearing down block. I'll use that, that's pretty good. I can just tidy them edges there. Okay, that's pretty good. I'm happy with that. 
Okay, so the other thing we want to do is that to get uh, this as a, a half, as they call it, we need to take all this bark off and we need to flatten both sides down. So I'm just going to look which will be the flatter edge. You know, you're doing it that way, I've got to do it that way so it sits flat. So I'm going to keep that there. Okay, that's our half. It's a little bit, um, it's not as straight as I'd like it to be, but we're up for a challenge. Okay, we're in the wilderness. Okay, so we're going to give it a go. I'm just going to trim the edges up there, take all the thick bits off, make it a bit even all the way around. Okay, so that's pretty good. I'm quite happy with that. So that's our half. See, it's not as straight as I want it to be, but you know, it happens. Right, for our drill, I think we should try this one first. Let's have a look at the diameter. So we've got to take all this bark off. You can do this with a knife, it doesn't matter, knife or axe. The reason you don't want the bark in there is because it's, it's got a char and the bark can sometimes slow that process down a bit, so you want to get it all off if you can. It's a little bit rotten in places. Okay, that's our drill. That's not too bad. Okay, so that's our drill. That's going to go on there. Okay, so we've got a bearing down block, which is there. Spare drill. And then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a bit of string on this. Maybe tie, take these bits off here. Just tidy up any bits that potentially give me a bit of trouble. So, right, we take our trusty knife, and then what I'm going to do is cut a little bit out of the back here. Obviously, minding I don't chop myself in the meantime, just because this is just for the so the, the string can sit a little bit easier in it. Okay, just a little groove like that helps the string sit in. Nothing much, nothing major. Something the same the other end. Try and get it in line. It's about there, I'd say. I mean, there's other ways to do this. I mean, feel free to try other ways. Okay, let's put my knife away. What I want to do then is take my paracord, make a quick slip knot. Okay, doesn't matter what end you stick it on, I'm just going to stick it on this end here. Okay, and as you pull obviously tight on that, that's just going to pull tighter on there. So, getting the tension, the right tension for the bow, is, is sometimes the tricky bit. Because obviously you can't have that tight to start with. You've got to have it a little bit loose, and then you, what you do is you work it out as you go, go along. So I'm just going to tie this round here. Normally all I do is wrap it around, and then go through, just tie it off, 
You don't need a special knot for it. I'll have to cut this short, otherwise it'll uh, get in the way. Just gonna do that. Just gonna do that. Tie that off like that, yeah? And that's just gonna be like so. Move that around there, yeah? That's probably a bit too loose. So we can try. What we do is you can just put a drill bit in. Yeah, I can see it's too loose already. See, that's a... Uh, uh, might be all right. I like it a little bit tighter. So, no big deal. I say it's all trial and error. Take the slack up a bit. Wrap it around a couple of times. Always a plane when you don't want them. Always. Take a trusty knife. And what we want to do here is obviously to the side of us. One of these, we want to make a really shallow tip point, should I say and then we make a long one like a pencil. So one is gonna be maximum friction and the other one is gonna be minimum. Okay, so that's one. And the other one wants to just be a little bit longer. So. Okay, that point's a little bit longer as you can see. You can make it longer than that if you want. You're redoing before we start anyway, the main process. So what I want to do then is I want to just leave that there. I need to work out where I want to do my... I want to make it work out where I'm going to put my V in. So I'll probably I'll put my foot on there. Is it, just work out what way suits best. See, they both rise up a little bit. So I'll probably put my foot there. I'm probably gonna go about there. So what I normally do is, I get in the middle there, and I just make a depression like that, or an indentation mark with my knife, as you can see. Just keep going like so. Okay. And that's it. Um, same with the, the half. Right, the half just um, is not seasoned wood. It's actually green wood because I want this not to burn. Okay, so I've chosen a wet green wood. Okay, this is hazel, just because there's a lot of it here. So this is a fresh cut one. Yeah, and this is a seasoned one. So you can people use stones, people use bones, people use all sorts of things for a bearing down block. You can even make up one of your own. You know whatever even if i seen one some guy made up a there's a ball bearing racer he made drilled a hole put a ball bearing racer in there and as he spanned the thing the drill sat in there and it just span around but i mean that's okay that's cool but when you're in a wilderness situation there's no ball bearings around here so okay so what we want to do then 
we're going to go over here and then we are going to get everything set up and I'll show you. So let's just recap. Bow, bearing down block, half and our drill. So this is quite a crucial part. I am right handed so what I normally do is I put my left foot firm onto the uh, half okay and so what is a really good idea is to bring your left hand wrong so it's left hand foot left hand arm to bear down and your right arm is going to be the arm that does the drilling so this is where you want to be parallel if you can be as much as you can because your arm's going to be this okay and you want to bring your elbow your arm around and lock it in so your elbow goes around there and there that's where you want to lock in lock into your shin there because you don't want this to move about it's also a good idea to get as many big breaths of air as you can inside you because this is really hard work if you're not used to it i mean i know it'll probably put me out of breath so what i want to do then this goes in there that goes in there what we've got to do first is that we've got to bear it in yeah so we're going to drill that bear it in and then we're going to cut our v So when we do our drill, like this, okay, we don't want it like that. We don't want that on the inside. We want it on the outside, okay? So that's underneath, around, and over, okay? Like that, yeah? Do it again. Okay. So now our little round bit's on the outside and not on the inside, because we want that maximum travel, okay? We don't want to be overexerting ourselves. Okay, I'm going to lock in there. I'm going to put my hand, if I can, okay, on there. So if I need to tighten up the string at any point, I, I can do it by just sort of squeezing that. Okay, so I, I normally hold it up here, get my hand on there. What you want to do is start off slowly. You can see the drill's pretty... It's not perfectly level. I'll just give it a little bit of pressure and just keep that. We're not trying to start a fire, so don't burn up all your energy here. We're just bearing in. See that? See, it's, that's not bad, because it's going to tell us if we've got any problems. So obviously the string wants to be a little bit tighter. Let's have a look. Yeah, a bit more. Yep. Okay, so what I've got to do then, there's a few things I've got to do there. Tighten the string up, and okay, see if we've worn down our ends, put some new ends on it, and cut a V. As you can see, whoo, I'm out of breath already. Okay, so I've tightened my string up now, and then, right, I need to cut a V in here. There is several ways to do this, but I go for the V. Okay, another time I'll show you another way. Right. So the way that I normally work this out for the if if you're a newbie is to imaginary you've got a, this is a clock, this burnt circle here, right? We've got quarter past, and from ten past to twenty past is what we want to cut out. So if we cut, so we mark an imaginary line across there, okay? And then we put an imaginary line across there. Don't make this too big. If you're going to do it, do it too small to start with, because if it's too big, you've got to start again. And if you see that there. The marks that I've made with my knife, that's probably about where I want to go. Okay, the cheating method is that if you've got a nice little saw, you can saw it out, or if not, you've got to do it the old fashioned way and do it with a knife. So, so that's what I got. Okay, just dig it away. Okay, if, you, if you've got a saw, okay, you can saw it out. It is quicker by far, I must admit. Um, but let's say if you want to do it the conventional way, obviously you just you can do it with a knife. Just when you do the point itself, right in the centre, it's good to just make sure that there's nothing in there at all. So we're there. Yep. So let me just put this knife all. Oh no, we don't want the knife away. Yep. So what we've got to do first, obviously, is redo our ends. So. Unfortunately, both ends are going to 
smoke and unfortunately unless you've got a, a waxy leaf like a holly then you just gotta grin and bear it but if you've got one maximum and one minimum I oh, see that's that's the maximum end and that's the minimum um, that's the minimum and that's the maximum end of friction Okay, so we're going to do that. That's going to go in there, like so. Okay, so before we get going, assuming we're going to get a ember, we can either do the grass now or do the grass when the ember is forming. Okay, it's up to you. If you're going to be tired after it, get the grass and stuff ready now. If not, just crack on and do it because the ember needs time to form. So it gives you a little bit of time. So I'm going to put my knife away. I need a piece of bark, like I said. So all we want to do with a bit of bark like this is to put it under there so it collects all our dust that goes on there. Okay, and then when that collects on there, we can move that away and it stays on there. If it goes on the ground, there's a good chance it will get damp and it will put it out. So we want to put that on there like so. Okay. If anything's going to fail, it'll be the string. It always does. It's all, so always, always the one that lets you down the most. Because it just, because obviously with paracord it stretches. You can use leather. You can use cordage. You can use anything. But I tend to find just a bit of paracord does the trick. I must admit that once the paracord has been used a few times, it's got its stretch and then it's, it's pretty good. So, okay, no chat, get on with it. Make sure you're comfortable before you start, because this is like, say, hard work. You want to make sure everything is perfect. Okay, your things are perfect. Get some good breaths inside you. Okay, so we're pretty, it's pretty good. So, start steady, because that's, if it's going to pick up any problems, you want to try and sort them out as quick as you can. So I'm just going to start off steady and then just try and keep. So I'm a slip, which isn't a good sign, especially now. Give it a second. Try not to breathe on it. As it's trying to form now. Okay, I'm going to try and pull it away. With a little stick. Okay, that's a nice size coal. Just add all these other bits to it. Let it grow. We can give it a bit of time now. It'll just start forming into an ember, as you can see. And while that's doing that, I'll get my grass ready. 
Okay, so we can see the ember going now. Okay, if we just waft it, you can see the red bit. It's forming up quite well. Yeah. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to put it into my grass and then blow it into an ember. But you can you can give yourself a little bit of time doing this because you know there's no hurry. The ember is very delicate when it starts and it needs to grow, okay? And at the moment it's growing. So we can, you know, we don't have to rush. If it's raining, you would lean over it, keep it dry. Or if your worst thing, uh, this did actually happen to me, sweat run down and it went straight onto my ember, put it straight out. Nothing worse. All right, ready? So I'm gonna pick her up, bring it to my grass. Okay, just gonna tip that in there, hold up there. Put it on there. Okay, be really careful. Because this is like half the process. Okay, and there you go. So, as you saw, we gathered all the materials from around here. Okay, willow was all out, it was all out from that tree. It was all collected. I didn't bring any of it in. Um, so we got uh, obviously our half. A drill okay look how many times you can still use this and get a fire quite a few times okay that was used to just collect our coal as you can see it's got a little dot on the bottom we've got a bearing down block as you can see is charred as well okay that's that's gonna happen I mean you can't I mean the best one I ever had was a stone it had a little like a little hole in it and it was smooth I found it on the beach and I had that for years that was brilliant because you only got friction on one end and it was just so well worked so well so then obviously we've got a, a trusty bow here. Okay, it's solid. Okay, this is um, not a green one. This is a seasoned piece of wood. So that will actually stay like that forever. I'll probably keep that actually, it's quite a nice bow. Okay, and then obviously you've got your string. So it didn't take a lot to get going. I didn't talk about um, your grasses and stuff that much because different environments have got different stuff. I bought my own grass in it. A little bit of a cheating thing I guess you could say but it was uh, the bow drill was the main thing I wanted to talk about here but so whatever environment you're in you you're in you need to sort of research what you've got grass or or uh, honeysuckle bark or anything like that is pretty good so this is a really good technique to learn I, to me when I was doing this, when I first started doing this, this was like a rite of passage into bushcraft. It was just my own thing, of course it's not. It was just my, once I'd done this, I'd pretty much crossed over. It was almost like an acceptance thing. Just in my mind, nobody else's. So once I mastered this, to me, it was the rest of it come reasonably easy. Um, but don't forget, this is a primitive technique. You know, and, and let's face it, this thing's been going for thousands of years. Neolithic, Mesolithic, you know, Iron Age, Stone Age, it's, they've all done it, okay? And I don't know for fact, but I've probably, fire by friction fire has probably not been started in here, this particular area in this woodland, probably, I'm guessing, for over a thousand years, maybe. Okay, that's just a guess. I don't know, nobody will ever know. But what's really good when you do this technique, because it's primitive, you don't know, the last person to do this was here was a long time ago. So, I'm going to stop waffling on about it. I want you to get out there and try it, because it is the only way you're going to learn it. So, get out there, do some bushcraft. Any questions, leave a comment below, because I really do like to hear from my watchers. And uh, let me know how you get on. If you really don't know, or you're struggling with it, give us a shout. I mean, I'm, I'm you know, I can try and help you out there. So. Until next time, okay, don't forget, every Sunday night, new video. Okay, guys, catch you later.